drive insights. So it's up to you guys to kind of um, talk about that, and then we can go over in more detail um, the edits to the uh, proposed edits to the Board of Selectmen policy. Okay. Um, anybody have any comments on the memorandum? I just have one minor, but um, I'll give the rest of the board a chance. Uh, the last, pa the uh, paragraph A, uh, section A, last paragraph, uh, just throughout the entire parcel, the last four words. Yeah. You can just strike that. There we go. Yeah. Um, but I thought the cover letter with the memorandum was, was well written. Um, I don't see any other, does anybody have any other changes, tweaks? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have, I have one question with regard to the um, zoning map amendment. Um, I would uh, Captain Parker's uh, adjustment. Mm -hmm. Has that been reviewed with Jerry Manning? I sent him an email. I have not heard back from him. I will try and actually talk to him on the phone before we go to the Board of Selectmen meeting on the 10th. Yeah, I'm just curious if this site, when it was originally there, maybe had a uh, co-location co for housing or something for the proprietor? I'm not no, I think what, ha what typically happens in any of these weird zoning lots is that um, the first lot off of Route 28 was considered B2 and then beyond that was R25. So there must have been an, an allocation or an increase of the lot from the original uh, lot that fronted on, on, um, on Route 28. We changed all of that for the um, Pirate Museum and everything. This was just yeah. a kind of an oversight, yeah. and it wasn't until um, Bruce Barrow and the GIS said, you know there's this little square that's still in there, because you can't see it when you're looking on the map yeah. uh, on, the, on the actual plan. You have to really be looking, zooming in on, on that, so. It's a good catch, though. Mm. All right, moving to, we have the building commissioner here. Uh, Mr. G, do you have any comments on the sign amendments? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <laughs> That's a hot mic. <laughs> um, no, actually I don't. I think it, I think it turned out very well. Men's Section Community Information Board. Um, I'm going to open this up to the board before I go back to the building commissioner. Uh, you heard Kathy's comments on the CIB. What is your flavor? Do you want to push for the third? Do you want to ask the select selectmen their, their offer, their choice? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we should present it at this time. Just make sure you're in the mic. I'm sorry. I don't think we should present it at this time, I think. There's a lot of other things going on, and maybe uh, we should wait a while. There's no rush on it. Well, I I have I have a different opinion. Uh, if we're gonna if we're going to see the activity there, uh, we should at least have um, good signage for events. Even if it's, even if it's a mobile sign that can be moved in for the event. Uh, it just makes sense that there's a there, that location is um, going to be noticed by more people than just the one at the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce or the one at the uh, uh, DY. Uh, it just makes sense that uh, that extra sign on 28 be uh, be made available. Joe is the. Um, I think the number of signs that we currently have is fine. I I don't hear any, or I haven't heard in my position or hearings on this board of any pent up demand for a sign. I think if there were people asking for it, if there were groups asking for it, unless I missed something with the two major events that were there, the Irish Festival and the country music. Um, I know they did have some signage that ran into some issues that they could have worked around had they known they couldn't have worked around it. They wanted a sign of X size. Well, that's what we're, we're, we're always going to amend the special event signs. This was just yeah. for a community information board, uh, which would be something in addition to the edits we're making. I, on this I understand, but the location you mentioned happened to be 
that. at that particular site. I, I haven't I haven't heard that there's a a demand for it. Um, and so I, I think we, as, as board members, we should wait until we're asked. Um, are, you, are you indicating that you'd rather wait until the site was developed? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to wait until there's some demand for a third community information board. Yeah. And, and, I, I mean, I'd like to think I'm listening um, around, but yeah. um, if, if, we've, if we've heard that people are, or businesses are wanting this, um, then yes, we should consider, but I haven't heard anything I haven't. to say, any? let's get another one. And we did run into some back and forth and questions with regard to distraction and the like. Um, Were there any circumstances uh, surrounding those two events relative to Pat McDonough? Wasn't there something that... Um, Mark, had a, the Mark had an issue, so... Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, well, the, the problem had to do with the, with the um, fact that the community event signs only applied to uh, religious and nonprofit and civic organizations. They didn't apply to for-profit. And that's why we've added in the um, temporary outdoor recreation sign aspect on town-owned land to allow for-profit to also get the benefit of the 32 square foot um, when they're doing an event on a town-owned property and they've gotten approval from the Board of Selectmen. Kathy, uh, when does uh, when does that site begin to get developed? We just submitted a, um, a kind of an update to the community preservation um, committee today. Uh, we, we've been ever since um, special town meeting when we got the 2.2 million in CPA funds. We've been trying to use that to leverage additional funds, and it looks like we got um, some funding potentially from land and water conservation. Um, but the problem is, is part of it is for um, design and permitting, and you can't get compensated for uh, work that you've already done. And we're not going to know whether we have all of those funds in place until the end of the year. So what we're trying to do is get everything in place this fall with regard to selecting a consultant so that they can get going. And those um, were significant, those grants. Yeah, it was almost a million dollars. And, yeah. and how about the Parker River Bridge? Um, the Parker River Bridge um, that we just signed today at Town Hall, the um, contract with um, MIG Corporation. Um, so they have, um, those documents are signed. They have been meeting with us and we've had pre-construction meetings and everything, but they didn't have a signed contract yet. What, what's their contract t a time limit? I think, of, let's, let's just let's stay on the signs for a minute. We'll, well get back to Captain Parker's. Well, that uh, it's okay. tied into that. That's why I'm asking the question. Right. Um, you know, how many signs? How much activity do you want? In and around that area, that yeah. they are going to need to use some of the drive-in site. They're going to have they build out a, t a use of town-owned land property form as well to go to the board of selectmen to use some of the former drive-in site um, for their staging. They'd like to have some type of trailer up near Route 28, and then having some storage and equipment uh, somewhere on on the site. We're working with Kelly Grant with regard to making sure that we're not having any negative impacts to resource areas and where they might be able to put that in order to maintain enough uh, space for events. Um, so we would an anticipate having some type of events during uh, the Parker's River Bridge construction. It just wouldn't have the 100% of that field area. There'd need to be a portion that would be fenced off uh, by the contractor. They realize that we will be having events there and that they would need to accommodate it. Most of those events have been happening, obviously, on the weekend, so there wouldn't really be a lot of conflict. And that's a two-year project? It's a two-year project, yeah. Do you have any comments on a community information board? The your job the, is to enforce and not to have comments. This is, if you want to say off the record, it just, I don't know if it would make your job easier or harder or what. The idea is in the beginning of the drive-in site committee, uh, utilization committee, there was discussion and actually I think it was Tom Roach that brought it up. Maybe it would be a good idea to put a community information board at the entrance to this so that when there are events there, that the people that are using it could utilize that board, identifies the site as the, as the drive-in site or whatever it's gonna be called. That's why I, rec I asked that we just put it on while we have a light bit of business to do with zoning, there's a little bit of a sign change, there's not a, a whole bunch of zoning to amend. So that's the other reason I brought it up. And uh, just another point is that there's no money to pay for this sign right now. There's no guarantees, but when we're ready to use it, if it's not in the bylaw already, then we're waiting for the next cycle of, of town meeting to get it in the bylaw. And that was the point of bringing it up. We don't have to put it in there. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I, don't, I don't have any 
I don't have any uh, skin in the game, so I just thought that it would be a good idea. While the zoning amendments are light in this round, maybe it's a good idea to put it in there. It wasn't my idea to begin with, but I just thought it would be a... We don't have to do it. It doesn't matter to me. Well, we also have a... We also work at the behest of a certain group of five, and um, they have the right to take it in and put it out, whatever, you know, whatever they'd like to do. So we can always talk to them next Tuesday. And see. How yes, see what they see what they think. But if there's no money to pay for it anyway, it's not like the sign's going in tomorrow. It's just you know, nobody's even come up with a plan for it. It's just make it eligible. That's all. That was my idea. That was the, that was the thrust be, be behind my comment that uh, I, it makes sense to, to to have it available, even though we we're not going to see it actually built for until it's absolutely ne needed. Okay, so Joe, what do you think? I think I'd like to amend what I said based on what Mark said in your clarification, Tom. Um, forgetting that there is the cycle that we have to go through for these things. It could take a year, mm -hmm. um, conceivably, yep. uh, to get something. Um, why not have it in our back pocket? It doesn't yeah. mean we do it. Yeah. It just means we have the flexibility to get it done when we're, at, when we're asked. So okay. um, I'm, I'm back with <laughs> the, the Board of Selectmen ultimately decide the location, just so yeah, you know. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, Lee, I'm okay with think? that. Thank you, Mark. I guess the only other thing is, with a lot of activity going on there with the bridge and construction on the site, um, it wouldn't be wise to, to put something nice and permanent there that might get... I would strongly re not recommend that you put anything there now. I think everyone's talking about future. just having it in, in the, the future, future in the back pocket. Because right. remember, we have to put a pump station on that site too. So there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> the toilet building. Um, so. And a, and, a, and a bike bridge. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about and a bike bridge. A solar bike. field. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and the hits keep on coming. Okay, so I guess right now we'll, we'll keep it back in there. Uh, Thank you, okay. sir. I think it's good Thank to talk to the board of selectmen, see how they feel about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so, well, I'm sure they'll have lots of comments, but just kind of going over the, um, the board of selectmen policy, mm -hmm. uh, Mark and I had talked about it, and with regard to the name, we went back and forth and ended up with fundraising slash special event. It's kind of up to you guys on what, on what you want to call it. Um, we did modify the, the title there for the single freestanding temporary fundraising special event signs just to emphasize that this is uh, temporary. Um, we did include um, the numbers limited to one temporary on-premises sign at any one time, so we don't want people to have like a fundraising sign and then also have a special event sign and all these different signs all over their property. Um, we made a few tweaks to the um, fundraising signs by including nonprofit fundraising campaign signs to kind of give it a, a, the idea that it's more of a longer term thing. Um, and we had a lot of discussion with regard to the time frame and we were thinking that maybe, maybe even six months might be too long and doing it to three months, um, but the applicant may apply for a renewal through the building department and it kind of it'll be a little bit up to Mark to kind of do the sniff test to make sure that it really truly is a fundraising campaign sign and not something mm -hmm. else. Um, and then we did take out um, that language with regard to the content uh, and then we also added um, a little section there saying applicants for special event signs for events held on town-owned property must obtain approval from the Board of Selectmen through the use of town-owned property application process. Just emphasizing that that's something that needs to happen. Um, the other thing that we didn't really talk about too much last time had to do with temporary directional or information signs that are off-premises. Um, we have been proposing to decrease the size of them from 12 square feet down to 6 square feet and also setting a limit on them. Originally it just said shall be determined by the building department, but we had included but in no case shall be more than and just inserted 10. was looking for some input from the, from the board uh, on that. And then again we eliminated that content uh, reference uh, under the off-premises signs. Um, before I go to the board, uh, Mark, do you have any comments? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Roach? No, no comments. Okay. Lee? No, nope. no comments. No, I'm sorry. No. Um, I love the fact that larger sizes may be allowed by the Board of Selectmen on a case-by-case -case basis. They won't do it all at once. I don't know what you mean. That's a joke. You can take out a case-by-case -case <laughs> basis. <laughs> larger sizes may be allowed by the Board of Selectmen. That's fine. It was just kind of to identify that it's 
not all, uh, you know, they have the option depending on the circumstances of your particular case. But that's true. Um, They're the Board of Selectmen. Yes. They can't walk on water, but they can do almost everything else. Um, at the discretion of the Board of Selectmen, or do you just at Large sides may be allowed by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Um, I can see why the number 10 seems a lot to me. I'm just trying to think you got two on each side of the road, that type of thing. Is that what you're coming up with? I Five. think it's just the number that Mark's been experiencing at the worst case kind of situation. If you actually start looking at where the signs would be placed, the beginning of Route 28, each end, there's two. There'll be a few in the middle. There's three, four. Getting off the highway, there's five. Up in Yarmouth Port, six. The, the signs start adding up really quickly and the farmers market is one that um, she puts her signs out religiously you know according to the to the way the bylaws written now but she puts them up on Thursday they're gone by Saturday afternoon and they pop up everywhere old townhouse road and forest road you know there's they just wherever you can put a sign that's where they put a sign and so 10 seems like a, a, a reasonable number they have to tell us where they're putting them as well mm -hmm. well okay no you you you, you you get the rubber on the road. I'm, I'm just, I just, you see the sniff test all the time about what's going on right. And so if 10 seems like the right number, hey. Um, that's like the small campaign signs, right? That type of thing we all see. Yeah. yeah, like the farmer's market puts up their two by three signs all over the place. Sure. Any feedback from the uh, Board of Selectmen on this? They haven't seen it. They'll see it on they Tuesday. See it They'll okay. see it on Tuesday. Sometimes they. Yeah, see they may say we're not interested in any of these changes. <laughs> Have a nice day with regard to their <laughs> policy. And really, if they're not interested in that, it, it it needs to go hand in hand. So it's really kind of a little bit up to them as well. And last question I have again is sort of like housekeeping. Um, are we now not allowed to bring things to the board of selectmen for zoning for May? We're now going to be always October. Which is fine. I just our calendar has changed, so I just. As I Joe personally said, have not. There's been no direction given to me specifically with regard to that. Although I know that that's what's been discussed. Okay, because Joe brought something up about 45 seconds ago that made me go, "Well, yeah, that's right. We may have to wait a year, and maybe it will be a full year." In all honesty, I always thought that the re the benefit of having an a annual and a fall was because zoning needs to be a lot more dynamic than it once a year. So I always thought that the idea was that we would, maybe our main emphasis might be the fall, but that if we had something going on, I think we should be able to put something on the annual town meeting. But it is tough to turn around from the beginning of May through, I don't know, when you have to shut the warrant down, what, beginning of September? Was it? The warrant this time, I think it's like the, the 17th or the 24th is being shut down for the October 29th. So it's quick. Four and a half months, basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, do we need a vote on this? I, I guess it just it sounds as though you guys are interested in submitting it basically um, as is with these edits to the Board of Selectmen for discussion on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds yes. good. Okay. Thank you. Um, the wastewater, I guess, I don't know if we need the, the building commission for wastewater, but thank you for being here. Um, Wastewater letter. Does I see uh, Kurt out in the audience? Kurt, do you want to say anything to the board? Not unless I have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love you too, Fine. Kurt. <laughs> Let it be noted. Um, I was enjoyed having. If you, need to, if you need something, otherwise. Okay. Um, Lee, you're a you're a member of the committee. Is there something you'd like to say before we consider the letter? Well, um, as we talked about last time, I I did some edits. And presented them to Kathy. I think you have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, I did take out. Um, Kathy was emphasizing, you know, the the analysis for for growth and so forth. And the reason I I wanted to take that out, not to take away from the great work that she did. Um, you may want to lean into your mic a little bit. Not to take away from the good work that Kathy did, but um, I just wanted to de-emphasize because I didn't want anybody getting hung up on the fact that once sewers come in, you know, they're expecting a lot of development and a change in the character of the town and blah, blah, blah. And I just 
thought that de-emphasizing some of that wording was a good idea, but that's just my opinion. Um, but I also, you can see in red that I wanted to emphasize to the, to the selectmen that um, for future economic development of the town in the way that we want it to develop, especially along Route 28, that the wastewater program is very important, especially if you want to build your tax base for, on the commercial side. Agreed. Um, I don't see any problem with the edits, but I only a board member of one. Does anybody have any problems with what Lee said? No, I agree with Lee relative to leaving the uh, excess flow out. Um, not sure we want to go down that road now. Um, we have also thought that um, if there was uh, extra flow that we would kind of look to uh, Route 28 for redevelopment um, as opposed to um, other areas. So I, I think it's good that that's out, but I, I think the letter is well written. And I mentioned to, um, to Brad earlier that uh, his references to Bob Dewar, Bob worked his butt off trying to get that uh, to pass, and unfortunately, he didn't. Yeah. it didn't. I only had one uh, comment, and that, that had to do with the very last paragraph. You used, uh, you started off with, uh, as Bob realized. Uh, I think it, it, may se it may seem redundant, but I would use Bob Dubois' full name Agreed. there, yeah. and, and not just, not yeah, just. Yeah, that's a good uh, catch. Yeah. Uh, it, okay. It, uh, it, otherwise, I g agree with Lee that uh, um, saying smart growth is, a, is, a, is an easier way to uh, describe that. Um, okay. I had Karen Green also take a look at it, and she mentioned maybe instead of saying former chamber director, maybe longtime chamber director. Sure. Um, and then the only other question I had for the, for the board was um, Lee's edit specifically say, um, major priority for the town of Yarmouth as part of the DHY regional clean water initiative on Cape Cod. Is the board comfortable saying, I don't know how much information was given on the DHY with regard to the presentation that Rich said? Still up in the air. But as, I guess the, my comment is, is the board comfortable emphasizing not just a centralized wastewater treatment facility, but but emphasizing your support for the DHY. That's the only question I have. Well, in actuality, DHY doesn't yet exist. Right. Right. Um, but um, we know that that's the thrust, that that's the direction we, we uh, are moving toward. And um, if, if you're, if you're going to leave the word, leave the letters of DHY, I would say, you, preface it with the word um, proposed, proposed DHY, Regional Clean Water Initiative. The reason it's up in the air is because of the fact that uh, Howich doesn't have fall town meetings. So consequently, they wouldn't be able to take a vote on the regional approach uh, as with Dennis and Yarmouth. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be holding up the process until the spring when they get into their annual town meeting. I, I, I'd just like to say one thing. The reason I put that DHY in there is that there's a, I think there's a bigger benefit for the town of Yarmouth to go in on a regional approach as opposed to go, going it alone. Mm -hmm. I think going it alone has a lot of negative uh, aspects to it. Number one, if we go on a regional basis, we're more likely to get grants and funding from various sources, economic development, um, the state in particular, and who knows, there could be some kind of an, um, an initiative down the line for federal funding. And, um, you know, if we have, for instance, if we have shovel-ready design projects, we're, we're golden, and if the if the planning commission recommends going on a regional approach, I think that tells the selectmen that we'd rather 
do it that way mm -hmm. for a lot of good reasons, a lot of good economic reasons, as well as maybe you don't want a treatment plant in Yarmouth mm -hmm. going it alone. Okay. It's okay. also a good selling point at, at town meeting too, um, indicating that the town is looking at a regional approach. Um, that goes back to the commission where um, this whole thing started, but I think it's a good, good way to have it. A, a, a couple of thoughts. One, um, the fact that DHY doesn't exist yet um, and we don't know what it will be, what kind of an authority it will be, what kind of organization it will be, what its powers will be, I would be reluctant to endorse something that doesn't exist yet mm -hmm. and we don't know how it it's going to work um, so that, but we do want to say regional. So I, I think maybe we just say as part of the regional clean water initiatives, we just don't mention DHY in particular because it hasn't, it, it doesn't exist yet. See, I don't agree. But am I? I don't like, agree. That's a, uh, well, you're, you're kind of the, the expert here. The, the legislature, the House has already approved it, mm -hmm. a legislative act to form a three town regional treatment system so in effect maybe it doesn't exist because we haven't adopted the agreement yet but all three towns have already reviewed and approved and amended and submitted their comments and so forth to the legislature it's passed and it's just getting ready to be approved by the Senate so even though this is just a recommendation from planning we're not saying, hey, sign a contract. Yeah. That's up to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. But we're saying, hey, we think this is the best approach for the town of Yarmouth from a planning perspective. Uh, Kurt? Then, then maybe we go back to propose DH1 and spell out what DH1 Kurt, I'm going to ask you to stand just for a second. Come on over to the mic. Oh, um, two, two things. Just, I'd like your input because I remember the last chairman of the uh, – who tried to get the wastewater product through and it really hurt, didn't work. What do you think? Do you like the initials? Do you not like the initials? The DHY? Were you listening what we were talking about? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we're, right now we've got between proposed or taking it out. Um, Lee, who's on your committee, thinks it should be a strong statement to put it in. Uh, whereas Joanne makes a good point, it hasn't been officially declared okay yet by the powers that be up on Beacon Hill. Um, so. What do you think? Do you like the initials in there? Do you think it makes uh, a better statement yeah, for your it, committee? I think uh, whether you use DHY or just say a regional approach, I think it's important. Um, because from, from a financial standpoint, Yarmouth does not benefit that greatly in the capital up front. But the operation cost going forward once it's built is huge for Yarmouth, number one. Number two, uh, zero percent financing is a much better possibility under a regional approach and there's a possibility to go with that of a debt forgiveness which would basically be the same thing as getting a grant and we don't know that percentage so I don't want to quote it but you know there's different numbers out there so as far as the three towns I think we're 99 percent agreement of what it's going to be because we've had another committee sitting every month talking about that also between the three towns and it's just the biggest hiccup has been the timing. When we had a, a, a DHY meeting, I believe it was August 13th, it was a Friday morning anyways, and Tim Whalen was there and said, well, we might get it out of the house mid-September if we're lucky early September, and next thing we know it's out on Monday. So it, it accelerated things, but uh, for whatever reason, Howard took a vote not to bother to have a special town meeting, and the feeling was everybody should vote on it at the same time. But I still think it's alive. I don't, right now, I don't see any reason it shouldn't go through. But just apparently it's going to get pushed off till spring now instead of this fall's town meetings. Okay, so as the chairman, do you mind um, us just taking out the initials and put keeping the word regional in there? Again, that's up to you. That's fine either way. Okay. Well, well I, I have a question. What, what, is, what exactly is it called in the legislation? What is the DHY? What, are, what, are, what is that called? Basically, it has been who it's called. It's, it's an enabling, it's an enabling legislation to let us enter into agreement. Three so, towns. the state house okay. isn't 
That's getting into the, anything. They're not nitpicking the details. That's up to us yeah. as three towns. So they, they, they allow us to talk to each other and form an agreement. Right, and that's basic. We've been working on that, you know, on another track at the same time. So we have, you know, different things going on at the same time, as you probably know. We have. So, Lee, does it have a name? Yeah, it's the Dennis Harwich Yarmouth Regional Wastewater. We're actually calling it clean water now, I believe. Oh, it's clean okay, water. There's a, there's a, there's whatever, there's a website on it. Is, it. We should call it what the three towns have agreed yeah. to call it. When you call a meeting, you call a meeting of something. So I just want to I just want to be sure we're in a in a letter like this that we are specific about it's this thing right now that we're supporting. You could you could quote it as a Dennis Howard Yarmouth agreement without giving it a title also. Okay. Well, I, you could treat it that way if you wanted to. Wastewater agreement. Yeah. In the later in the letter I call it clean water program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I I I'm I'm being Okay, we're we're picking uh, we're nitpicking I'm, I'm here. So too, too many details. Uh, sorry about that. So it it seems like the board. Just so you know, the board of selectmen I think is having a workshop on wastewater on the seventeenth of September. It, yeah, there's a, actually the, the next. I believe the next couple of meetings are going to deal with some of these issues. Yeah, the tenth as well. I know one's going to be a workshop. I believe next week's the workshop. The tenth is not the workshop. Okay, so that's the seventeenth, and then I think sorry. the nineteenth. I got so many dates, I have to keep them There is a three-town meeting, which would probably, for anybody who has the time to go to it, would be beneficial. And that'll be held at the Howitch Community Center. Um, that's the 19th, the Thursday night, at 6 o'clock. So the three towns, selectmen's, finance committees, and the wastewater committees are all invited to that, as well as the public. So that might be helpful to everybody. Um, thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so uh, just uh, being the uh, chairman for a few more weeks, why don't we strike DHY, just put Regional Clean Water uh, Initiative on Cape Cod. It gives the chairman of the committee the impact he wants with the word regional. It brings to light what Ms. Joanne said about de facto hasn't gone all the way through the quote-unquote legal process up on Beacon Hill, so we're on a win-win situation there, so that's good. Um, thank you, uh, Lee, for not only your work on the committee, but for redoing this. Does the rest of the board have a problem with just s submitting this as it is now with the change of uh, uh, putting Mr. Bois's name in again at the end and making longtime chambers at a former chamber? Everything else okay? I think it's great, Mr. Chairman. All right. There we go. Thank so you. I will put this out and let you know. When do you want to sign it? I guess it's in some... Whenever you want me to. Just give me a heads up. Okay. There. Thanks. All right. Meeting minutes. I wasn't here for this, so I can call for a vote and not do much else. Does mm -hmm. anybody have a uh, any comments on the meeting of August 7th, 2019? Seeing none, hearing none, call for a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move the minutes August 7th, 2019. Second. Uh, having a motion, a second, any of the comments, seeing none, hearing none, call for vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So it'll be 401. Thank you for your, your uh, help that night. Mm -hmm. I'm having brain issues, mom issues. Um, Board of Appeals agenda and decisions. Whatever you've been getting. Okay, Kyle does a good job. Uh, yes. Committee updates from board members. And we probably have solar. We had a CPA meeting uh, this afternoon, and obviously we discussed the upcoming issues with the um, wastewater and the CPA and what impact that that would have on the CPA relative to the work it does in town, both on a um, town level and the regimens that we are uh, able to um, approve uh, historic affordable housing open space and recreation. And um, most of the meeting just went around uh, what we've done in the past and uh, what we plan on doing in the future and uh, relative to uh, what the issue is uh, with the wastewater and the uh, pending articles that will be um, going on town meeting relative to the um, 
the Yama taxpayers actually making a decision. Lee, do you have any updates? Nope. I think, well, the RAC met yesterday, so they, and they made some recommendations, right? They did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, matter of fact, they uh, voted on a um, WIF, which is Wastewater Infrastructure Investment Fund. Yeah, I know, <laughs> WIF. And they're, they're going to be bringing that before the uh, selectmen on the 10th, mm -hmm. and also uh, reference the uh, one and a half split with CPA and wastewater. But um, also, um, I think you that brought up the uh, betterment, uh, Lee, um, relative. I don't um, know if it was me, but we had the discussion about it. Yeah. Um, then there was another discussion about. Um, but I think we made some recommendations. Ent enterprise fund. Right. A water enterprise fund yeah, was, right. was recommended. Yeah. You also recommended the DHY to move forward. Is that true? Recommended to the, to the board of selectmen. Yes. Yeah. To the yeah. And then, but with the whiff, it was the one and a half percent. I thought it would be without touching CPA. Was that a different vote? No. Um, we t we took a vote with mentioning the CPA, and then without we took another vote that changed it to take the word CPA out of there because we wanted to give the board of selectmen the option of how they want to go about that. Yeah. Whether it comes out of the 3%. It's going to be their decision. So you want one and a half percent. You don't necessarily specify where it comes from, whether it's right. a new give surcharge or a CPA give conversion. Us Just give us the money. So without the, <laughs> <laughs> without the CPA, you have a whiff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, it's all about money. All right, uh, Ms. Joanne, anything? I, I don't have any um, committees to report on that. Tom? Yeah, um, the housing uh, was also yesterday, and uh, they too um, uh, took up the topic of the uh, of the uh, CPA money um, without uh, without a, any formal action um, or, or opinion. Uh, just saying that uh, they understand the the mechanism that uh, has been proposed for the for the funding of, of the uh, of the sewer program. Okay, that was good of them. Uh, board member items. Anyone? No. I I have one question um, for you, caveat. I was going through the use table. Um, just because I was reading about another planning board in another in another town. Yep. Sale of guns and ammunition. Retail. It's retail. <coughs> you need do you need special permits from the state in order to sell? No, guns? to have a shop. No. It's just retail. Yeah, you need licenses through the ATF and through the police chief. It's a retail shop. So if someone were to get those licenses through other places other than Yarmouth um, and wanted to open up a gun shop in Yarmouth, they could do that? Yes. Okay, at some point on our agenda, I'd like to visit that as a zoning amendment for the sale of guns and ammunition, um, whether that's a zoning amendment for, for an accessory use on the table, a change on the table, as it would be a, a retail use, a retail, a retail function that would not be allowed in the town of Yarmouth. Can we do that? <laughs> I, it's a constitutional right. To, a constitutional yeah, I don't think you're going to get very far. Okay, sure, you're going to be successful Dedham, with that. The town of Dedham um, just did something <laughs> okay. on this issue. And do you, can you quote what they did? Yeah, it's, has it been approved by the AG? It may have been. Um, I just have to look down at Denham. <sighs> town of Deadham. Dead I mean, I, I can do some more research on it, but I, I, just a question. So the, at, as of right now, someone could open up a gun shop in Yarmouth, getting the appropriate licenses, and could sell guns. Yeah. Okay. I can tell you the requirements. I have my own gun shop back in Hopedale. 
And uh, first you start with the local police chief. You make your intentions known. And then you contact, then you contact the state. And the state sends someone from the ATF out to look at your facility, your potential facility. And uh, then you uh, have to go through a federal process as well. Yeah. So I had a federal license, I had a state license, and then I had separate licenses to sell ammunition. Um, and then, like I said, I had to uh, make it known to the, uh, the police chief in the local town that I was operating as a gun shop. I had it post hours and so forth. Okay. And is, it, is the location restricted in terms of near schools, near daycare centers, near? Absolutely. Uh, it is, so it there is. are provisions yep. in one of the permits that you have to receive as to where it, was it can the state be located? Permit. The state permit. But this was going back many years ago, so it might have changed as well, but they were fail-safe uh, actions that you had to take in order to be um, very conscious of what you're yeah. doing. Okay. You know? This was in Metro West Daily News. The town of Dedham, town officials, um, have begun the first steps towards changing the zoning bylaws to include restrictions or a total ban on gun shops. Well, they're taking steps, so they're just yeah, it's in the thinking process. Yeah, they haven't done it. Yeah. Well, we have one in town now, right across from Stop and Shop. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he or she would become pre-existing non-conforming within. The passing it's the of only one in town, right? And he's been in business for years and years and years. Yeah. His father had the business, actually. Yeah. I'm not thrilled with fishing. Can we get rid of fishing hooks? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, well, you know, it's, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. That it's, that's How about not funny. Whaley? I, but <laughs> I, I, I'm really sorry. That's I know, funny. but on the other hand, it's, well, I don't get into it, so I won't. That's, but I don't know. The zone, I don't see zoning as a right to take away someone's rights um, or to limit their rights, um, but to... To, to have well, it limits curtailments location, of where they sure. can put it. it to, limits location, can't right. have next I, to school. I didn't, I was about to say, limits curtailment of where to put it, but I have a feeling right now that it, I, isn't that in our bylaw? I'd have to look. On guns? No. No, not guns. I'm just, there's certain provisions in now for um, medical marijuana with And also to for entertainment, uh, adult, adult entertainment, entertainment, and there was one other one too that uh, can't be within X number of yards of a school and church. I thought there was one more, but again. I remember okay. the marijuana. I marijuana. Remember putting that in. Yeah. Oh. In 1999, with special education, uh, special adult, ed, uh, special adult education boy. <laughs> I got too much of Brian on my head with adult education. There was uh, uh, adult entertainment. Uh, it's been a long day with Brian. Um, correspondence. Did we get anything from anybody? I think I sent out to everybody. Um, the email from Kyle with regard to the um, Opportunity Zone Visioning Workshop that's mm -hmm. scheduled for Wednesday, September 11th at 1 to 4.30 at the Cape Cod and Islands Association of Realtors. I know that Tom Barron indicated he was going to come, and I think... Did you RSVP for me? Right yeah. now I have yeah. coverage for Brian, so uh, I would like to go. And I, you know, if anyone else is interested in going, just let me know or let... Uh, I let no. Kyle know. And let Kyle know. That'd be great. So you think you'll come, Joanne? Yeah, I already let him know. Oh, you did? Okay, afternoon. thank you. Yep. Um, did, so, did someone from Yarmouth attend this seminar down? Um, both Kyle and Karen Green attended the academy down in yeah. Washington. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's right, too. They did go. Yeah. Nice. I've always heard about those two. <laughs> oh, my kidding. Yes. Staff updates? <laughs> um, I don't really have anything. Okay. Um, we really have uh, a minor board right now because we're missing a couple people, so I'm very grateful you're all here. Again, I apologize for not being here on August 7th. Um, we have a board of selectmen meeting uh, next Tuesday. We don't know what time we're going to be on the docket. Uh, you're all invited to attend. Of course, you don't have to. Um, it's up to the chairman to go. Um, <clears throat> I know we're going to try to get some interviews before the, the night gets started, and hopefully we have some people who want to apply to join our wonderful high-paying job uh, board, excuse me. Um, but again, I thank you very much for your diligence in showing up. Um, it's very embarrassing when you can't have a quorum, and it's happened a few times to, I know Tom and I, when we've been on the board over the years, where you sit there and there's somebody in the audience who can't get his or her application uh, heard because we didn't show up. So for the third time in less than 91 seconds, thank you very much for showing. Uh, besides the Board of Selectmen, on the 10th, we have uh, the 11th that Kathy just mentioned, and then our regular agenda. Uh, we're going to have to schedule a public hearing. Yes, I think the public hearing, if everything goes well with the Board of Selectmen, 
um, the time it takes to kind of notify and the register. I think the register is the right place to not for noticing the public hearing because that's where the, our community looks. It looks like we would probably be having it on our October 16th meeting. It's a that's little not too late. It's not too late as long as we make a recommendation at that time. If you didn't might make a written recommendation, you always do, you vote and you recommend, um, then it would have to have been 21 days ahead of time. The earliest we could possibly have it would be um, that Wednesday before, which I believe is the 9th of October. Okay, yes, October 7, 9th. Um, but I was trying to keep it into into your regulars. Relatively minor amendments, and uh, obviously anything that comes out of the public hearing um, would have to be amended on the floor. And the selectmen would do, they could, if they had a meeting on the 15th, they could approve or disapprove whatever they wanted to do, and we'd have to react the next night. Or would they wait till our public meeting and then, because there are some times we've gone into a. We've gone in twice sometimes, and I think that's when we really have a larger, um, agenda items and you know they may say no we're not we're not comfortable recommending at this time we want to know what happens after your public, public hearing, hearing uh, and they'll recommend from the floor okay and we'll just have to provide them with some type of summary memo of what happened just the ask, ask first that's all uh, so again going back to attendance on the board does anybody have a problem attending on October 16th anybody have any vacations right now coming up because I know it's a wonderful time to get away do you happen to know what day of the week? That's a it's Wednesday. It's our regular we meeting Wednesday. night. So our regular Wednesday meeting. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah. That's fine. Um, so if everybody hopefully can be here, then we know we at least have uh, five, four, six. Yeah. Depending on Chris. At our 18th meeting, we do need to um, elect officers and our committee assignments. Okay. Brad, can I ask you a quick question? You were mentioning the board is selecting the meeting Tuesday. Yep. Next week. Um, are you doing some interviews for the vacancies? Yeah, I oh, said that they s they're going to uh, hopefully Mark's going to meet with us around f Kathy I and I. Mark and was hoping to just have the chairman and not have. A huge oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Mark Forrest. Uh -huh. you mean. Yes, yeah. Mark yeah. Forrest, correct. Oh good. Um, All right. Four thirty. I'm assuming here upstairs. Uh, we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yep. they'll, I'll have some talent bank forms for you. Okay. So there we go. Um, all right. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, anything else, Kath? Anything? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Here we go. Thank you. Very good. Um, Thank you. Have you heard anything? Oh. <coughs>